Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video, we are going to be going over arguably the most powerful line that this new uh, Katsu deck can do, and it's a very combo-esque line, uh, kind of goldfishy, but it's really fun to like see what the power of, the, of new Katsu can do, um, and I want to just kind of give you like a fun line that actually has happened to me one time um i did not have mask and pouncing links so i couldn't do the last two elements of this line but if i would have had links i would have been able to do it um and it what this line basically does is it turns katsu into a Yu-Gi-Oh combo deck so we're going to get right into that uh and kind of show you what you can do um bottom line is you can do 33 damage for zero resources uh but we're gonna we're gonna and talk and turn off their hero ability uh but we're gonna talk about that in a second um if you like this kind of content at the end of the video if you want please leave a like comment subscribe if not me it's totally fine go to our flesh bug creator leave a like comment subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game uh if you want to join the discord down below we have a really active community right now i'm really happy with the positivity and just the overall activity the community is having right now we have over 360 members and we've been going strong um, and I definitely encourage you to go down to the Discord, uh, whether you're a ninja player or not. Or if you want, if you're a longstanding supporter of the channel, uh, I have now opened up a Patreon with two tiers. The first tier gets you access to new roles in the Discord as well as exclusive channels, and then it also allows you to submit decks for, uh, for deck techs on the channel. Uh, and then the tier two gives you everything tier one has and it also gives you access to my videos the day early or at least the night before for most videos, unless it's like an on the spot video like this. Uh, however, I want to get right into it um, without further ado. So basically the TLDR, like the short story of this, of this line is you're going to be doing 33 damage and you're going to end up searching for one, two, three, four cards. You're going to get go get four cards over the course of this turn. Three of them you're going to get without discarding anything. You're just going to go get them. Or not discard anything, but discard anything from your hand. We'll put it that way. And one of them is going to be through Katsu Trigger. So the basis of this is you have Surging Strike, Descendant Gust Wave, Bonds of Ancestry, Dishonor in your hand in some way. It doesn't matter what's in Arsenal. Just one of them's in hand. Uh, all four of them are in hand, and then you have a zero cost also in hand. So you have Surging, Descendant, Bonds, Dishonor, and let's just say a random zero cost. Um, you're going to be able to play out the whole line doing this. So uh, the cool thing about this line is Bonds allows you, for anyone that's not aware, so you can Katsu Trigger, uh, which allows you to discard a zero cost and uh, go get a card with Combo. Then you have Breeze Rider Boots, which gives all combo cards go again. When an attack, when a ninja attack action card hits, you're allowed to then pop Breeze Rider Boots. It kind of works like Refraction Bolters with Dorinthia uh, and give all combo cards go again for the rest of the turn. And then Pouncing Links is when a uh, uh, ninja attack action card hits, you're allowed to um, break Pouncing Links and then go get a... A card with two or less base, which in this case is Dishonor. So what you would do is you would run Heart and Cross Trap. Uh, you pop Surging Strike or pop Heart and Cross Trap, which then allows you to play Surging Strike for free and plays for five. Now, most of the time, most of the time, when you play against a Katsu, um, if you're familiar with the matchup, you don't want to block Surging Strike for this very reason that I'm showing right now. It, because if they have the other parts of the combo in hand, you screw yourself. Because unless you're an Oldheim, you most of the time have to give up two cards to block out Surging Strike or a card and equipment at the very best, right? So if you do that and you have three, let's say three cards left in hand to block with, and I have the rest of this line, you're just going to take a ton of damage, right? So most of the time people let Surging Strike hit because they're going to try to block Descendant Gust Wave or in, in previous Katsu, try to block Whelming Gust Wave. So they let Surging hit. Block Whelming Gust Wave for six, making you have Razor if you have it. If you don't, then you don't draw, and, and the turn kind of halts a little bit after that. So um, because of that, most of the time in this combo, Surging is going to hit. When it hits, what you're going to do is you're going to do three things, and you can order these triggers. Since Breeze Rider Boots, Pouncing Links, and Katsu is all on-hit trigger, you're allowed to pick your triggers so it doesn't matter what you do in this situation. What I probably would do first is Katsu Trigger. You would discard that zero cost that you have in your hand. Go get a go get a second Bonds of Ancestry, which you can see in the bottom right right here uh, near Whelming Gust Wave and Dishonor. 
then you would pop mask and pouncing links, which would allow you to go get your second dishonor, which you see right there uh, in the bottom right. And then you would pop breeze rider boots to give all cards go again, because you're going to need to give that whelming gust wave that you see in the bottom left go again naturally. Okay. So you play surging strike for five for free because of heart and cross strap. Then you play descendant gust wave also for free because it costs one less after being played after surging strike. So now all of a sudden you've dealt 10 damage over two links for zero resources. Then you play Bonds of Ancestry uh, for also for free because it gets cost two less after being played with a card with Gust Wave in its name. And then you have to have a Whelming in, in Graveyard to have this line work, but it's not that hard to get a Whelming in Graveyard early. You just block with it or just attack with it. Um, so Because the way Bonds of Ancestry reads is you banish a card from your Graveyard and then you search for that a card with that same name from your deck and banish it face up, and then you're able to play it that turn. Um, and so what you'll do is you'll banish a Whelming Gust Wave and then go get a Whelming Gust Wave, and you have access to that now. So that's four more damage. So now you're at 14 damage for zero resources over three links. Then you play Dishonor, which because it's played after Bonds of Ancestry, will get plus two. Um, and since you've played out Surging Strike, Descendant Gust Wave, and Bonds of Ancestry, its, it's second ability now turns on, which means if it hits, it basically shuts off the opponent's hero ability for the rest of the game. Um, so now you're at 18 damage over four links and have potentially turned off their hero ability for the rest of the game. And when you think about some of the heroes in the meta, that is crippling, right? Levia just dies. Uh, Lexi cannot flip to reveal to give go again or a Frostbite. Icelander can literally not play cards from Arsenal. She might as well just quit. Uh, Dorinthia might as well just quit She unless she's trying to play a value game plan because she literally can't give her Dawnblade uh, a second swing um, unless she has Twinning Blade. There's so many heroes that it screws up. Briar can't make Earth tokens or, or uh, Lightning tokens. Um, Arachne can't opt and look at your deck. All types of stuff, right? So Surging came in for five. Descendant Gust Wave came in for five. That's ten. Bonds of Ancestry came in for four, that's 14. Dishonor came in for four, that's 18. Then you play the Whelming Gust Wave that you went and got with Bonds of Ancestry. It'll have go again because of Breeze Rider Boots. That's 21 damage. Then um, you'll play your second Bonds of Ancestry that you got with your Katsu Trigger earlier in the turn. That's 25 damage. And then with the second Bonds of Ancestry, you're going to discard a Fluster Fist um, from your graveyard and go get a Fluster Fist and then be able to play that layer in the turn. Then you're going to play your second Dishonor that you went and got with Mask of Pouncing Lynx, um, which is an additional four damage. So we're five at Surging, 10 with Descendant Gust Wave, 14 with Bonds of Ancestry, 18 with Dishonor, 21 with Whelming Gust Wave, 25 with Bonds of Ancestry, 29 with the second Dishonor, which also, if they happen to block the first Dishonor, now the second Dishonor is going to turn off their hero ability. And then finally, just for good measure, just for fun, you play Fluster Fist at the end for 33 damage. So now you just did 33 damage over the course of eight attacks, um, and you've turned off their hero ability. This just kind of shows you what the power you can do with this deck. Now, of course, this is the ultimate crazy goldfish line. I understand that. But, and I'm going to kind of mess with my pretty little setup here, right? Like, let's say you don't even have Mask of Pouncing Links. Let's just take Mask of Pouncing Links away. I'll literally delete it right now, right? Let's just say you have access to Breeze Rider Boots and Katsu Trigger, okay? And let's just say, obviously, you can't, you don't, you, we'll, we'll put Bonds over here real fast. We'll put Fluster over here real fast. I'm just going to kind of do this on the fly because everybody's going to be like, oh, it's, it's so... It's so uh, goldfishy that that's not like you know possible. First off, I've done it once already, but I'm gonna show you something you can also do very very easily, right? Um, so let's just say that this is your hand, right? Let's just say you have a four card or you have a five card hand. You have this, all this, and let's just say I'm gonna use a fluster for example. You also have a zero cost in hand, which is like a fluster fist, right? So you pop heart and cross strap, play surging, they let it hit. First thing you're going to do is you're going to Katsu Trigger. You're going to get rid of this Walmart. You're going to get rid of this Fluster Fist, right? And you're going to go get, you discard it. And then you're going to go get a Bonds of Ancestry. You're going to banish it face up. You can play it this turn, right? Then you're going to play the same line out. Surging Strike, Descendant Gust Wave, Bonds of Ancestry. When you play Bonds of Ancestry, you're going to go get that Whelming again, right? Then you play Dishonor. Then you play um, Whelming. 
basically, even without links, you just don't get that second dishonor. You're going to play Whelming, right? Then you're going to play the second bonds that you got with your Katsu trigger. I've done this line right here, I'd say about four times. Then with that second bonds of ancestry, you're going to banish a flush of fist and go play flush of fist. So even without mask and pouncing links, this is still a 5, 10, 14, 18, 21, 25, uh, 29 damage turn with dishonor trigger. And that's literally just off a five card hand with the full combo in hand. So even without pouncing links, pouncing links gives you the double dishonor attack, which basically guarantees dishonor hitting for the most part. But this right here, even just this, right, is 29 damage. Also, in this situation, let's just say you're running Mask of Momentum, you might draw and draw into something else that you can play, right? You might draw into another Flusher Fist or 100 wins, or heck, you might draw into another Dishonor. Who knows? But even without ma any mass draw whatsoever or any mass Tutor whatsoever, you're still dealing 29 damage and Dishonor is hitting. Like I said, in one week of Talishar games, not even one week, I've done this like three or four times. It's not that hard to do. Bondsman Shestri basically makes your Katsu, when he has the right cards in hand, a Yu-Gi-Oh combo deck. Quite literally a Yu-Gi-Oh combo deck. To the point where I've thought about running Edge of Autumn and then running like Blue Bonds of Ancestry in, in my deck just as a blue block three that can pitch for Edge of Autumn and be able to go get this very, very consistently. So... Overall, it's insane. It's more fun. Like, I'm not saying, like, play Katsu right now. It's the best deck in the format. I'm just showing you the power of what the deck can do now. And the thing about this is it can do this off of pretty much nothing, right? The last thing I'll show you all, if you all, if you all will entertain me for two seconds, let's just say you don't have access to any of these cards, right? Um, let's, just say, let's, let's just say you have a blue. It can be any blue. doesn't have to be... Um, doesn't have to be a dishonor. Let's say you just have a blue. I, I literally did this, a version of this um, in my uh, games the other day. Let's just say that this is your hand, All right? Let's say you have no natural go again. And let's say that you have um, two red whelmings, which is what I had. At the time I had a McGinchy, but I'm gonna use Flusterfish just because it's here. But let's say this is your hand, these four cards. Let's just say you do Kadachi, Kadachi. They block the second Kadachi. Then you play Flush Your Fist out, right? And they're like, oh, he doesn't have go again. Can't really do too much with his hand. I'm going to let it hit. Doesn't really matter. They let it hit. You pop Breeze Rider Boots, giving it go again, right? Retroactively, basically, right? You discard this Whelming Gust Wave, and you go get a Bonds of Ancestry. You then can play Whelming Gust Wave for three. You then can play Bonds of Ancestry for four go again right because now it's paired with whelming gust wave and let's just say you go get another fluster for fun right then you can play this out right um there's a ton of stuff you can do with this and you have one resource floating right so you could go get um i don't know anything you want to go get you can go get a sonar for four you can go get a fluster fist for four uh you can go get a bunch of different stuff but basically I turned a no go again, no natural go again hand with two whelmings and a fluster into a one two for Kadachis, six with fluster fist, nine with whelming, 13 with bonds, 17 with fluster fist. So I turned a, a turn that should be six damage into 17 damage. Now, should you pop Breeze in that situation? You never know. It depends on game state. But what this does is it, it basically, what Katsu can do now because of Bonds of Ancestry basically giving you a double tutor at any given point during the game, it allows you to turn really crap hands into really good hands is basically the way it goes, right? Really, really nutty. Um, hopefully this is fun uh, for you all to see. Uh, I think it's really cool, and I think it shows like the power of what the deck can do now. Um, still is hard to hold on matchup. I think Icelander is about the same, but like, it can race the aggro decks down better. It does better against Dash now. It's better against Fi. It's better against Briar because his on hits matter. Katsu's on hits matter. With Breeze Rider Boots, you have to really consider letting pretty much any attack hit when they still have two cards in hand because if they still have two cards in hand, that means they could have a Whelming or a Descendant, and that means they can go get Bonds, which means they can now start looping attacks together, right? It's something you have to keep in mind. Basically, anyone that's playing against Katsu, if they play a non-go again attack and they have two cards in hand, you have to think in your head, can they combo off of this? Because they probably can. 
Um, so it's just a thought to think. Uh, but yeah, if you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If not me, it's totally fine. Go to our Flesh Bug Career, leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. And yeah, I'll see you all next time on TC Talk. Thank you all so much, and you all have a great night. Thank <laughs> you.